Um, welcome to Freshly Grounded. This is episode is with myself, Faisal Chowdhury, and of course, Big Man Sam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, great to have you here, man. It's great to be here. How's things? Yeah, not bad. How are you? Yeah, all good. In the good. Uh, no. All good. Good. Yeah. And today's episode was a uh, nice, quick, short one. It's uh, because we heading we're heading over to the feed source launch later on. Yeah. Uh, but we decided to get an episode of Freshly Grounded in, of course. And what did we speak about in this episode, Samuel? We spoke about uh, Ross Kemp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we spoke about documentaries in Docu- general. Documentaries in Aaron general. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Murder. Yeah, Life, murder. Prison. Prison. Yeah, prison. Death. Death. <laughs> really fun episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> prison, death, and murder. Yeah, uh, yeah no, it was kind That's of fun good. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Spoke about my polo neck. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. yeah, we did mention that. Russell and Bromley. Yeah. ASOS. Yep. Um, also, guys, we're going to be doing. We're going to be launching something um, soon, uh, or making an announcement <laughs> soon. It's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> we're making an announcement soon, yep. uh, guys. Inshallah, and we're really excited about this announcement because we've been working on this announcement uh, video for a while, actually. Um, so that'll be fun for everyone, Inshallah, to enjoy and watch. And um, and we're really excited for what the next few months have in store for us. So uh, give us a couple of weeks, or maybe next week, and we will uh, hopefully have the announcement out. Mm, I'm excited. Yeah. And uh, other than that. Anything else you want to say to the people? I've said it all in the episode, to be fair. Yeah? Yeah, to be honest. You? I really need to do it. I really need the bathroom, bro. Right. Yeah. right, you just had a coffee, so yeah. It's decaf, that was actually. Fine. Even a decaf sends me... Fine, it's fine. All right. <laughs> Enjoy this episode, guys. This is Freshly Grounded. Oh, it's only 50 minutes. 50 minutes? Yeah. That's the shortest one we've ever done. I think so. Should we have another natter for 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to put that... Are we going to have the natter now? Let's so, just have a natter now. Right, fine. Yeah, we're not going to move it around. <laughs> well, you are there. Why are you, Riley? Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> oh, but you know what's good there, though, bro? What's that? What's amazing is that what? you just went through an issue of you almost fell back on your chair. I didn't and the chair. first word that came out of your mouth wasn't a swear word. Alhamdulillah. Which for most people would be. Alhamdulillah, yeah. 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 But what did I say? Like, you, said, you said, blimey, Riley. <laughs> blimey, O'Reilly, yeah. Which I've never heard. Nah. Blimey, O'Reilly. I didn't almost fall off the chair. I literally leant back on it and didn't expect that. Oh, I, do you know what it is? I wish I knew that was the that was the capability of the chair. Yeah, so I, have, more I have the feature. I, yeah, but you, now you can't. Well, you can. Oh, taking your shoes off. Why not? Be comfortable. I'm in a comfortable yeah. space. I'm in my office. Why wouldn't I take? Yeah, my, why true. wouldn't I take my shoes off? That's true. Yeah, that's true. We've had a lot of mugs on the table this episode, don't we? <laughs> yeah, for a few drinks. <laughs> yeah, a few drinks. Yeah, there's a decaf coffee there. Yeah. There's a coffee and a water for me. Ca- a caffeine coffee there. Yeah. Caffeine water. coffee, as most people have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Tim Humble was even quite surprised when you started talking about decaf coffee. He didn't really understand it. Yeah, but then I think maybe he felt sorry for me and then he mentioned that he d- has had a decaf before. Once before he did, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he was a child. I had a decaf tea yesterday. Oh my Is that too far? Is that too far? That's what my parents have before they go to bed. <laughs> I did before I go to bed as well. Oh man. Yeah, does it affect you like that, does it? No, it doesn't. Why then? I don't know. Oh. It doesn't even affect me. Since you've become a dad, you've become so old. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you know what's weird is that I can have a coffee and go bed as well. Yeah. So why did you get tea, decaf tea? Did you buy decaf tea bags? Correct. Wow. For guests, bro. I like to... If a guest comes to my house, I like there to be everything accessible for You them. like to get juice. So you I don't even have it yourself, but for guests, you get juice. Exactly. So I have decaf coffee. I have kettle coffee. I have decaf tea. I have tea. I have green tea. I have mint tea. I have carrot tea. I have all sorts of tea. So if someone comes to my house... Masala tea? I have something for everything. No, I don't have masala tea. Yes, good point. <laughs> I thought, man, like you would have some masala tea in the cupboard. What's that supposed to be, Sam? Because you're very prepared for your guests. Ah, oh, okay. That's nice. Good save. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. Probably got some masala somewhere. <laughs> Chuck it in a tea. <laughs> Is that how it works? I don't know. Could do. <laughs> Remember well, when we spoke on the ground about you going for a curry? Us going for a curry? curry yeah. And, uh, a ruby. Yeah, ruby. I still like to. Yeah, we should have. We went to go for a curry today, weren't we? Yeah, well, more of a breakfast, I thought. Yeah, yeah. You, if oh, you have if you're a man like me, you can have a curry for breakfast. I wouldn't probably do that necessarily. Come over to the brown side. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, having a curry for breakfast is. I would is, have a curry for yeah, breakfast. Yeah, it's normal if it depends on the curry. Like, if you, like, I what, think. Break it down, give me an example. I think you could have a lentil curry. Yeah, of course. It's a nice, healthy lentil. I wouldn't lentil. go for it, though. I, I have no. to say, I wouldn't necessarily desire that first early. That was my breakfast this morning. Len- lentils, yeah? Yeah, lentil and, and parata. Parata. Yeah. How many so paratas did you have? Two. 
you have the frozen ones that you yeah. Get yeah, they're actually nice, man. Aren't very, they? nice. very nice. They must they be bad for you. They're very like bad for you. They're very, they? very bad for you. Very bad for you. No. I should check before I speak about knowledge and someone in the comment says, but tr 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 yeah, didn't look at them. Look at the details. Oh, bro, I plow Surely you can taste that they're not good for you, bruv. They're yeah, amazing. They're, plasti they're plastic they're and they amazing, they become, bruv. They're plastic and they become anything, real bread. Yeah, I know. I know. They're not Ooh, good with for you. With a bit of hummus. Yeah, they're banging, but they are very bad for you. Really? But I'm banging them off daily. I can see. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean, Rob? <laughs> Nothing. I'm joking. That's yeah, they're good. They're good. Yeah, they can't be. They're not, if they, if I know it's they're really not good, bro, because it's like don't ask a me, piece of plastic you get out of the freezer, yeah, and then they, you heat it up and it's now real bread. And it tastes so good alongside it. Amazing. If it tastes really good, you have to question it. Yeah. Oh, bro, That's should I, I tell you what's bad? Please. Oh, Abani, that we so bad, man. We've still got a five minutes chat, so just... We've got six minutes. It's fine, just come on, you can do it. Do you know what? It's still not going to make an hour because when I turn the thing, we've probably got another seven, eight minutes. Okay. I don't know if I can make it, bro. We can um, either end it I'm now because you need to go to the toilet or we can do another five minutes of just chatting. It's up to you. The ball is in your court. I'm gonna this, is the, this is the introduction <laughs> as well, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to try. All right. Well, we owe it to the people to add a bit more to this, this episode. That's true. We kept it short. Yeah, for just five more minutes. Okay. What's really bad? Are you about to say? Okay. Sweet chili sauce. Yeah. Right. I love sweet chili yeah, sauce. Yeah. I don't have a lot of sauce. I don't like mayonnaise. I don't like ketchup, etc. So sweet chili, I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And my missus goes to me the other day. She goes, you know how much sugar is in that? I was like, nah. I was like, put, I, I, was like I understand there's probably a fair bit of sugar in there, yeah. but I didn't expect there to be the amount of sugar that there is in do there. Do you remember how much it was? Bro, 42 grams per quarter of the bottle. Now, the bottle is very small. Yeah. So if you're like... Yeah, it's like a... Bro, if you, the bottle because the bottle is small, a quarter of the bottle is like realistic that if you're having a big meal... Like, let's say, for example, you got noodles and you yeah. want to just yeah, yeah, douse yeah, the noodles with sweet chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a quarter of the bottle. Yeah. 42 grams, bro, is 10 or 11 teaspoons of sugar. Blimey. Bro? Blimey. I felt blimey. sick. Because I checked after, I had my, so I would put it in my noodles. Yeah. So I had a whole bowl of noodles with probably a quarter of the bottle. Yeah. And that was just gonna be meant to be a snack for me, but just noodles to keep me going yeah. until dinner. Bro, I, I, so I put, I put the sweet cheese sauce in the noodles. Then I put, then I checked it. I read it, I was like, no way. But I had the bowl in front of me now. So obviously daddy's got licking off. off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Papa was hungry, bro. Yeah, I don't yeah. blame you. <laughs> but I felt, as I was eating, I just felt guilty, yeah. horrible. That's calories, yeah. That's high the level amount calories. of sugar, yeah, that's bro, that sugar. was in there. Again, you can taste it, how nice it is. You can just yeah, taste the sweet. Yeah. yeah, it's sweet and savory. And it's, yeah, you can have it with everything. It's good. But yeah, it's, yeah. so are you going to, Maybe have less of it or... I'm not going to get sweet chili sauce really? now. Really? No, no, I'm, I'm not going to bring it into the yard, Serious, bro. yeah? Nah, but too much, bro. Do you know what it is? Because I, cause I like sugar so much, I don't want to waste it on things like a sauce or I a juice. That, I think that's quite a good... You know what okay, I mean? Fine. What would your chocolate bar or... But yeah, if, I, if, if I'm going to... Oh, by get, the way, mm. if there's probably not that much... If I can have... If I only have like a, a, a shot of having like one piece of sugar in a day... I'd rather enjoy a nice Snickers bar than have a juice which has so much sugar in it and sauces that have so much sugar in it that I'm not even going to taste the sugar in them. Because, you know, when you're thirsty, if you have a juice or if you have water, in fact, the water yeah. would fill up your yeah, first yeah, more. Yeah, 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 first definitely. More. Yeah, I agree with that. Bro, I've got to lock it off. I can't Fine. do it. Done, yeah? yeah well done. This is me, done, bruv. Yeah. Just thank you guys for listening to... Uh, no, you haven't started listening yet because this is just the intro. <laughs> yeah, enjoy enjoy, the, episode, enjoy yeah. the episode. Uh and uh, to the Yeah, <laughs> goodbye. <See you. laughs> And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit, the brand new podcast. And after that bit, by best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Yeah, man. So, uh, uh, yeah. Salam alaikum, bro. Alaikum salam Do you like my jumper? Do my top? I do like your top. I prefer your trousers. Do you? Yeah, I think your trousers and shoes are fantastic. Put them on the, put them on the table just for a second so people can see. Nice, man. So, uh, I was so taking back when I saw you this morning. I really? Thought, wow, yeah. So these are corduroy trousers. I can see that. And cropped. The yeah, cropped yeah, corduroy nice. trousers. And uh, my shoes. Uh, so I have a friend who has really nice uh, Russell and Bromley uh, shoes that look exactly like this. Yep. And I wore them once. I was like, wow, they're amazing. And uh, then I went to the Russell Bromley website and I said... Maybe I'll check if ASOS have a similar pair. And they did. Amazing. 25 quid. So 25 pounds, these ones. And the trousers? Top man. Top man. Yeah, and top, top man as well. I actually got this outfit because I, uh, for date night. Yeah, we, we, we went to, we went out. Remember what I told you? 
Uh, you went out recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, that's why I got the outfit, and then I, nice. I like I like the because it was fairly like fairly smart. It's smart. So I was like, let me wear it for the launch, feed source launch because obviously today is a feed source launch for it those is, listening. Yeah, this evening. Yeah, I think it's a smart outfit. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. And um, it's for the outfit for this evening. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out now for the day. Yeah, same. Uh, else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you saying like that? So I am as well. <laughs> nice. We're just out for the day. I'm, <laughs> yeah. out, I'm out till late tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to see you tonight at the launch. Yeah, it's great. Looking forward well, to it. Very much so. Yeah, I'm re- genuinely really looking forward to it. Um, really looking forward to it, man. That's good. I'm looking, seeking for some inspiration from Omar's keynote. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good keynote, and, yeah, he, and no one, no one's seen it. Yeah. Other than you. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I, it's I, a good yeah. I would like to say I helped him construct it, but I didn't. He did most of it, and I just added one or two things here and there. So you did help him, yeah? Slightly. I had I had like zero point five percent to do with it. Yeah. Okay. It's just still something. That's good. More than anyone else. True. Yeah. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it very yeah, much. So you? There's gonna be a lot of people there. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of press there, media. Yeah. It's been great networking. Rush is gonna be there. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. You met Rush, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, you I chatted to Rush yeah, the other day. Lovely. How did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, he's gonna be there. I like him, man. He provides good content. Well, Rush is a good guy. Yeah, he is a good guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a great guy. Um, yeah, we chatted the other I day. Said, I, I texted him the other day and I said to him, he said something. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll see you Wednesday, inshallah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, sorry. Like, not apologizing for like, but obviously he won't even understand what that is, innit? Because he's not Muslim. And um, he goes, oh, I don't stress, like, all of my friends are Muslim. So, yeah, but I'm so used to that, like. I reckon he knows what inshallah means. Yeah, of course he must. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> He will, especially now considering he said all of his friends are Muslim so mashallah yeah mashallah um, how you been man yeah I can't I can't complain you can't complain <laughs> nah. that's good yeah no, all good man all good yeah same old really how about you yeah man just you been busy. Growing, getting old man yeah you feel old yeah what makes you feel old last couple weeks I get these little aches and pains do you know what it is bro <laughs> am I um, uh, no it sounds like a broken record but my fitness is out the window bruv how out the window? Oh, far. Really? I'm hoping that... Was this the last time you did something? Skipping. I don't know. You got into right. skipping, didn't you? Yeah, we got into... But that was, it was hot. And now I can't go outside and skip because of the weather and stuff. What? But Sorry? You can't go outside and skip? Rush goes of outside weather. and skip? Yeah, I know, but he's a different level. He's a different animal, bruv. He's a beast. <laughs> Fair enough. Bruv, the, oh, in all honesty, I don't want to use this as an excuse, but I my, my, my fitness has really fallen short. Mm. And it's probably a... A common thing that happens when people become parents yep. because your priorities change and I need to prioritize it more because if I want to do it I can I can wake mm, up early and just go to the yeah. gym and stuff um, you and have to really want it though when you've got so much other stuff going on you have to really want it to make really it work it. I know it's so tough yeah I, I just don't want to be that guy who's like life falls uh, yeah. uh, 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 apart because he's so busy with work and, and, and like it's like I've only got time for work and family no you have to include fitness you have to include diet you have to include stuff like that yeah it's very true I didn't get a trim remember as, as you know it is I can really see yeah yeah you can tell I can of course I can tell yeah. <laughs> of course I can tell you've not had a haircut the first thing I said to you is are you growing your hair <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't in the mood for it and you're like no no <laughs> I regretted asking it as soon as I said it. <laughs> you went, no, no, I haven't had time. I was like, wow, I thought you'd at least have a joke. <laughs> oh. Any plans on getting a haircut? Again, we have to be around back now. Really? Yeah, a couple of weeks. But I'm going tomorrow. I know. You can't go away and not have a haircut, surely. Maybe get one over there. No way. True. I've heard bad stuff about getting trims there. You know that? Oh, that's People have bad experience. You'll feel, w- you feel the heat. You'll feel the heat on that. Nothing wrong with it. It's long for you. You used to seeing it really tight. It looks long. You saying I look grim? Grim? Yeah. Where, where did that word come from? Grim. Yeah, but I know. But I didn't say grim. But is that what you think? Though? No. <laughs> well, now you've been insecure. No, nah, no. Nah. It just looks grown up, but more rugged for you. Yeah. Oh, but the, the thing is, where I'm going. Um, where are you going? Is it secret or? No, I'm going to the UAE. Inshallah. Whereabouts what? in particular? Well, Sharjah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the where I'm going, the it's not like me having a trim is going to make a difference. I was just thinking about the heat. That's all I was thinking about is heat. Yeah, that's all I was thinking. About I'm sure heat. people. I'm not talking about. I'm sure people. Not about appearance. I know they survive. I'm sure people with hair survive. No, it's not. That's not. I'm not trying to dig you out. I'm sorry. Never no, no, it's fine, bro. We'll just do this podcast and with Big Man Sam and Ugly Faisal. No one said you look ugly. You look more mature. Thanks. Um, so you're going away tomorrow, yeah? Yes, yeah, tomorrow. How Charlotte. do you feel about that? Excited. I haven't had a chance to be excited, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah, go away. <laughs> you're on a podcast. You at least pretend that you... <laughs> um, you've been busy, haven't you? I've been busy. Tell I, the people, I mean, look, you've been busy. You've been busy. You haven't had a chance to have a trim. Have you packed for your trip? I haven't, no. 
What time is your flight tomorrow, bro? Hey, so I've got to leave at six ish, so it's not that bad. Six PM. Yeah. I can okay, so you got a little. I'm gonna pack tonight. After launch, tonight. after launch, I'm not going to like dinner or anything like that. I'm just going to shoot straight, straight home. Back. Yeah. I got packed. Get packed up. Yeah. See my boy. I'm not going to see my boy for a while. Make me sad. That is sad. Yeah. That is sad. At this age, it goes so quickly when you go. When I did when that, that tour in December, I came back I and I was you like, see the differences. Nah. Even though you show me those pictures then, like how different he looks. Yeah. Yeah. My um, we went, when we went to get the injections yesterday, the nurse she saw him yesterday, but she also saw him like four or five weeks ago for his other injections, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, you got so big!" Mm. And, and um, she was like shocked, bro. Really, yeah. yeah, but I, I suppose it's true though because babies go at such a fast course, rate, course, don't course, they? Course. Yeah, yeah. They but, but every time it. I see a picture of Zayden or, or Solomon, bro, I'm like, "What?" Yeah. I get confused, bro. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. nah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy. I was looking at this morning. Yeah, they, they, it happens quickly. Everyone says it. Oh, they grow up so quick. They they really do, mm. man. Kids move quickly. I I, Omar, I remember Omar used to tell me before he was before when 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 he became a father, he used to say, "Bruv, like it's mad that how much I think about death now." He's like, "I think about death all the time." It's like yeah, Omar said that. Yeah, he said he said he said it's like the the he's like just always on my mind. I can't tell you how frequently the thought of death comes into my head, and you know I was like, "Yes, yeah, good, obviously," because death, as we know, is a very important reminder because it's the reality that eventually everyone has to everyone will die. Um, but bruv, now that I have a kid, I can, bruv, I just think about death all the time. It's weird, bro. I just always thinking about death. Why having the Why having the child has has brought that on? Do you think? I suppose I don't know the answer, but I suppose because you think like, what would he do without having at such a young age having a father in his yeah. life? You also think, what would I do without him? You also think. Um, I want to be there to watch him grow up. Like I've never loved someone this much. I want to watch him of grow. Course. Yeah. And then you just think about death, and you start. But then the good thing is that when you think about death, you do think like, all right, look, inevitably, I don't know when I'm going to die. I need to fix up, man. I need to fix up. But there's nothing that fixes a person up more than the thought of death, don't you think? I agree. Yeah. It's reality of death. I hear you. Yeah, it just makes you think, man. It can scare you, man. It is very scary, is scary. Very but you scary. have to face it head on and just think about it. Yeah, I know people in my life who actively avoid the conversation of death at all costs. A lot of people who do. Even people listening to this thinking, why are they talking about why are they talking about death so much? But yeah, it's a it's a, it's a very scary thought, man. And you have no idea when it's going to come, do you? Let's face it. No, man. We kind of think. I think a lot of people get comfortable and think that you're going to just assume that you're going to pass away when you're older, mm. sitting on an armchair. But yeah. As we know, people go all ages, different times. It's very scary, bro, and very healthy to remind yourself. I agree. Yeah. It can it can give me like a panic attack, man. Thinking about it too much, bro. Yeah. For it's, yeah, it's, yeah. But it's weird how like you get like a little pain in your chest or something, and, and you then think, you're, yeah. La ilaha in the light. <laughs> it's true. Bro, so much, fam. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Oh, I was in the shower. I was like, Ooh. I was like, not in the shower, bruv. Not in the toilet. Yeah. This is, I'm, yeah. like, if, the, if I'm it's going in the toilet, in the bathroom, bruv, I've done something really bad, bro. I don't want my ending to be in this room. Subhanallah. Yeah. You know what I mean, bruv? Like, your ending is there, bruv. I was you must playing the other day with the turbulence. I was like, really? In the air? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. Bruv, um, you fly a lot, innit? I know this short flights, but you, you, yeah, you have yeah, to I do fly, fly a lot. Yeah, yeah. I do fly a lot. How do you yeah. find that frequently flying? Uh, frequently flying, yeah, it's okay. As long as they're not long flights. Yeah, yeah. I do need extra leg room, otherwise, I do struggle, man, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I don't mind flying, bro. It's quite exciting in the, in the scale of things. Like, it's quite nice to go up in the air. It's quite nice to see a, see see everything from a, the view of an aeroplane. It's quite nice to go to another country. So, yeah, I don't mind it. I embrace it. It's quite long, man, and quite time consuming, quite exhausting, but yeah, it's good. Do you not enjoy the time um, on the plane? Kind of, yeah, you get to kind of reflect. Or on the plane, like, be yeah, on, on the plane. plane. Uh, I can't say I love the plane journey, bro. I can't say I, I love it. I can't say I love it. I can't say I love it. Mm. I can't say I, it's ever really a heavily beneficial time for me either because I'm never really comfortable and, uh, yeah, I'll you be honest. You don't really like for your mind to have a clear thinking. I don't really like it. Right? Josh always like does a lot of stuff on a plane. He gets his iPad out and just like, he always just fo- does a, seems to do a lot. He travels he, so much. He kind of really focuses on getting stuff done on the plane. I just find it uncomfortable, man. I just kind of just wish it away, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of death, actually, I just remembered. uh, uh, So there's this Netflix documentary Mm. that. um, Have you heard about it? So uh, do you you remember that case of this guy called Aaron Hernandez? He's an NFL player. Yeah. And what had happened, bro, is he was accused of murdering someone Mm -hmm. who turned out to be his future brother-in-law. 
and then um and then what happened is then it then there was like another um double murder that he got suspected for kind of during the pro process at court bro this documentary is gripping really bruv. oh my, so this is gonna be spoiler alert yeah. yeah anyone listening who is planning to find out what happens in the end don't listen although i haven't i don't know what's happening here but basically bruv yeah it's just mad interesting because it, so this guy had it all yeah well he's 23 years old and he just signed a 40 million dollar contract for the biggest or like one of the most popular nfl teams in the world called the uh, patriots i think it mm -hmm. was tom brady plays mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. plays for yeah. and um it's 40 million dollar contract 23 years old fat yard bruv massive house and and then all of a sudden his body turns up in, and he obviously because he because of how much money he has in his house he, he lives in a very posh area so it's not every day that there's a body line around there and so and obviously from where Aaron Hernandez has been brought up and raised it kind of very quickly and who and the fact that he was the only person in the area that could have known this guy because they were future brothers very quickly he yeah. got arrested and stuff yeah. So long story short, he starts getting accused for all these other murders that happened past. So it, so it turns out that he potentially murdered these two guys, mm -hmm. then signed with the NFL, did a whole season of football, like smashing it, everyone's cheering him, knowing he just killed two guys, bruv. Like the guys in his head must be, bro, the mad, then I think like the end of the first episode or something, it takes the, uh, the craziest turn. Because this guy's speaking, so th so so. By the way, Aaron Hernandez has got his he's got a daughter, he's got his fiance that he lives with, and um, so then three live together and, and that kind of stuff. And then halfway through one of the episodes, this guy he's talking, he's like, you know, when we went to school together, he's like giving his interview, he's like, yeah, we went to school together, blah, blah, blah. and then you know, our relationship was um, probably different because you know people didn't really know that, like, but it, it escalated very quickly. And but well, by turns out that they used to have like, well, for this guy's claim, they used to have like sexual encounters with each other. And so apparently this guy is closeted gay. Okay. And because he's closeted gay, he's like, the, so like I said, because I haven't got to the very end, I don't right, know, okay. but the, I, this now is, they're now do, putting the narrative as if all of his decisions have, and all his frustration and he's like, bro, like the guy, like he, he, he reacts really badly to things. Okay. Like he, um, for example, allegedly like one guy said oh bro don't uh, like remember uh, that thing you did that time was stupid like that's all he said it's like yeah. me saying to you oh no i wouldn't but me saying to you sam when you did it last week that was a bit stupid yeah bro. yeah yeah, yeah. But, and he um was driving him in his car he he pulled over and shot him in the face what yeah he actually did that yeah but the guy survived which i don't know how right but i suppose if a lot doesn't want so he's a murder he isn't he wasn't he's a murderer, yeah. I haven't got to the point where if they, if they found him guilty or not, right. but I know he's very he's public. I just can't remember. Yeah. I think he ended up hang uh, from what I remember because I remember. Do you remember the case a few years ago? I remember hearing about it. Did yeah. he did he hang himself or something? I don't know. I can't, I can't, I, I can't remember the ending. I yeah. don't know what the okay, ending fine. is yet. But I haven't got to that part. But allegedly, yeah. th But that's the kind of brother you're dealing with, yeah. So okay. you think like how, why? So apparently, all of these frustrations stuff is because he is hiding the fact that he's gay, right. and so. He's like, um, gets tatted up to everything that, and anything that he can to make himself look masculine, feel masculine, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> no, but, yeah, do you yeah, get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the way they're steering the narrative now is that he's done all this because the the like underlying thing is that he likes men. Wow. But he has a, he has a wife, he has a fiance and a kid. No, I so I don't know how it's going to transpire, but it's gripping, man. Watch the rest and tell us how much you've got left to watch. One episode. One episode. Yeah. Documentary. It's, it's three episode documentary. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's very interesting, man. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. There's parts of it where you got close your eyes a bit because it's okay. some haram content. Right, right, right. But it's a documentary, you know what I mean? Documentary. So Real life. It, that, I mean, and that's the tough thing as well. Like, you have to be careful of like watching a lot of things nowadays. Dude. It's good to go into that conversation. To be fair, okay. even like, cause, 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 I remember one thing that I, I was inspired by, by with you as well when I went to your house is that like you guys was at the time watching a lot of like nature documentaries. Mm. It seems to be like the only halal content you can watch on mm. TV. So I wouldn't recommend people to watch documentaries, that, uh, watch things like that, especially movies and stuff. But the documentaries are a bit cleaner than that kind of stuff, aren't they? Yeah. And so it was interesting yeah, to see yeah. a documentary about his life. But even then, even with a documentary, bro, still got there's still parts where you got to like kind of, you got to watch with Hikmah Brown and forward bits and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, because obviously there's no excuse to be watching Madness. Yeah, for real. But the, or just read about his story. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But it's an interesting story, man. It's a very interesting story. Yeah, man, the guy, um, the guy potentially killed three or four men. 
based on the fact that he was in the closet and he was angry. I think it seems like that's, that's, that's the narrative it. I think that they're putting across. Like wow. he, yeah, is um, yeah, that's the narrative that I think they're trying to put across at this point that he was co- closeted and and he had a really manly man of a dad. And so he couldn't. Right. He had to hide it all his yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when his dad died, he went a bit crazy. Wow. And when apparently, like, when he was younger, he wanted to be a cheerleader, like okay. as a kid. Right. Like, and his dad would like shut that off quick. Right, and right, so right. It's an interesting story. Man. Interesting. Yeah. It's crazy how. Oh, do you know what else they were saying? They were saying they were talking about this thing called CTE. Have you heard about no. this? So in NFL and like now, inevitably in boxing and um, MMA, there's this. There's like. They, they've they started like scanning people's brains and you can see a big difference between the brain of a normal healthy person and the brain of these people who get knocked on the head a lot okay. and there's like they're, they're, there's like holes in their brain and really, stuff yeah? and it's called CTE where um, because you've been knocked so much in the brain you can get oh man oh but I thought the camera wasn't recording the whole time it's recording yeah you can get um, a depression feel suicidal um, a dementia and uh, other other stuff, other issues like that. Like, obviously, people get okay, knocked on the head, yeah. But we knocked on the head on a regular basis. So, so that's another element that they, I think, they're gonna look into. Like, was it the fact that he was one of their star players? Obviously, constantly getting knocked in the head. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does that make a guy just feel like weird? Maybe. Obviously, we haven't been through that, bro. You know what I mean? But mm. you ima- But you can imagine how how you do see some boxes and stuff that. You think, bruv, a few years ago, you was a bit smarter. Yeah. Isn't it? Of course there is, yeah. And now you're just acting that, a bit weird. Your, your brain slammed, that kind of force. It must have an effect. Yeah. Because your brain, isn't it? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... You're going to feel that. Am I right or wrong? Is ha- boxing halal or haram? I think, they say, I think that ultimately is an issue hit of hitting the, hit the face, That's isn't it? Yeah, you're, not allowed to do, you're not allowed to hit in the head, I'm I think. Trying to associate, I'm trying to associate this kind of yeah. the consequence of being hit in the head with that ruling just to see like... Even, even like a few months ago, bro, there was a guy who got uh, who died. Yeah. After He, he got knocked out in the boxing ring and then a few hours later he was pronounced dead. Yeah, wow. And you can also die from a punch to the head, mm. which is mad. Imagine that one time, bro, you're, you're like, something happens, you get an altercation. Yeah, you hit him and he goes down. Justifiably, and, yeah. you get in a... Sc- you're, even if you're just defending yourself, bro, but you spark him and he's dead. It happens, dead. doesn't it? It does happen. You hear stories of that, man. And you just think, wow, like, so many yeah, people have fights, yeah. that doesn't happen. And I yeah. hit one guy once and then that for happens. the first time, yeah. and now I'm in for murder. Yeah. Wow. Best to avoid punching people, if you can. And also, this documentary, actually, is probably a better documentary for people to watch in the sense that it's not, I don't think from what I know, it's not got any, like, haram content in it. It's called um, Ross Kemp. Uh in Belmarsh, have you heard about this? A new documentary just come out on ITV. I saw a little clip of it actually on YouTube the other day. Yeah. yeah. So cameras haven't really been lit in yeah, Belmarsh yeah, 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 yeah. before. And um, he just, above, he just filmed in Belmarsh and yeah. it's mad interesting. Yeah. I, I suppose I find, I always find crime and stuff like of that interesting because of my background in criminology. But that is a very, very interesting documentary. And um, Do you like Ross Kemp? Mental issues. I, I, I think that is potentially the only documentary really? I've seen. You've not seen any other stuff he's done. I've seen like Kemp bits of Ross Kemp on gangs and stuff, okay. like like on YouTube. Quite interesting, man. He's done he's he's done quite a lot of interesting pr- programs. To be fair, just shedding light on things that most people can't shed light on. Louis Theroux does that as well, isn't it? We yeah, spoke for about real. Louis Theroux. Louis, Louis Theroux. Mm. His his prison documentaries are the best ever. Don't, have you seen his? You, you must have seen. Yeah, I'm, I, I do remember years ago seeing his prison they're documentaries. They're old. But they're I can't old. They're old, they're old. But like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he's getting the cell with people. He yeah. asks and them like, like some crazy, yeah. like yeah, another level of crazy. Yeah, he's very good. So Ross Kemp, um, in that documentary, I see him eating the food, and he was like, out of all the places I've been to in the world, I can't really complain because he has been in so many different like terrible like prisons and stuff. So he was like, I remember him giving a uh, review on the food, saying it wasn't that bad. Remember that? That's what he said. And also, yeah. uh, one thing that he said is that he said that there's a massive difference in uh, UK prisons and US prisons with regards to violence, even though Belmarsh is one of the um, craziest prisons in the UK, he was saying, mm. and that there's fights in Belmarsh every day. But he said, even then, the violence in the US prisons is way more. It's interesting, isn't mm. it? Yeah, man. That was a good documentary. Ross Kemp uh, yeah. in Belmarsh, and he yeah. stayed a night in the prison. Yeah, He said he couldn't wait to get out yeah. one night, bruv. Yeah. Wow. So he couldn't wait to get out. And he, um, yeah, it's an interesting documentary, man. Yeah, he's done, like I said, he's done. Do you think he's bored by choice? Sorry? Do you think he's bored by choice? Yeah, I think so, yeah. 
He was bald in EastEnders years ago when I was a kid. He's always been bald, isn't he? So you think that if he grew his hair, he'd have a full I don't head think hair? I, uh, no, I don't believe that at all. I believe... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not going to give my opinion on his head. I don't believe he's got any hair there, no. I rate him. I think he's done, I think he's done an interesting career of documentaries, to be fair. He's a hench, man. Big boy, yeah. Yeah, he's He's real, though. He's real. I've seen him like in situations when they had a gun pointed at him and he grabbed the gun and pushed it away and said, you're not going to shoot me, are you? You're not going to shoot me. I heard about that. He's a, he's a real G, man. He's a real good guy. He's really like in the field. He's, yeah, he's he's a man. He's a man. I rate him. Watch some of his stuff. You'd rate him as well. Yeah. Someone's put a gun of, like, and he grabs the stuff he's put out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In terms of like his work of like documentaries done, he's just, yeah. he sheds lights and... and uh, being able to like have do a um, filming with certain gangs and, and pirates and all these like no one can really just jump in, in into that like to do it I think you have to be a certain type of person I think he I believe he's very real with it I think mm. it's I think yeah I rate him it, that reminds me of this um, Aaron Hernandez thing where he had um, he would get in his car they, they said that one thing that they found really weird and that, that kind of adds to the story of him like the story of him trying to per perceive himself as a character that he's not mm i.e. like being closeted was the fact that he um he used to have compartments in his car built he used to have compartments built in his car where he can hide guns and stuff and um so like so obviously he was so rich he probably could get customizations in his car and stuff but they said that what's weird about that is that he didn't have any felonies so he, it wasn't illegal for him to carry a gun mm -hmm. so that was all pointless he could have legally carried a gun, gun right and just had a gun. Right. And he could have kept it in his glove compartment and not had an issue with it. But it's like he was like trying to build this character of himself. It's sort of like being a gangster kind of okay. thing. Like he has to hide that he has a gun. Right. When he could have had he his gun. Yeah, Legitimately, yeah. yeah. So yeah. He, he would go out of his way to get a gun from a gun dealer when he could have just walked in the shop and got a gun. Buy it properly, yeah. That's interesting. Because in the States, obviously. So it's like all these things kind of add to his story and stuff. That's interesting. And, like straight up, and then he messed, with the, his, he messed with his CCTV footage at home to like... So it erases the bit where like he leaves the yard or something, but then like he f didn't erase the bit where he just came home and he has a gun in his hand on that night. And the chewing gum that he why? Well, why what? Why didn't he erase yeah. it? Yeah, he's probably just CTE. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> probably his CTE in his brain. Right. I don't know. But he just, I was gonna say just that's uh, a strange. Yeah, there's footage of him like holding a gun, and um, as if he yard. wanted people to see it. But he did, no, 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 because he was because he has home security. Yeah, but you're saying he edited some of it out, deleted some of it. Yeah, he must have just not deleted the, all, the, all of right, it. Right, by accident. Yeah. Sort of must, by accident. Right, must sorry, I thought you were saying it. in purpose he deleted some no, and no, left no, no, an no. obvious thing. Sorry. And like his, tr he, he he went to the petrol. There's a footage of him going to the petrol station before the killing, and he buys blue bubblicious bubble gum, and then on the um, crime scene, his bubble gum is there. Blue bubble gum, and also his um, footprints of them Jordans that he wears with in his size. And the, his car tires and that kind of stuff. Right. And then when he gave, and that was a rented car. So when he gave the rented car back, there was gun shells in the car of that gun that shot, off, off the gun that killed the guy and blue bubble gum. And he even offered blue bubble gum to the person, to the woman, to the saleswoman who he gave the car back to. He was like, I want some bubble gum. And so she testified saying he, he, gave, he like offered me blue bubble bubble gum. So it was like completely adds up. Yeah. Yeah. The you, need them, you need to finish it yeah. and, and tell me. <laughs> yeah. I oh, could just no, read no. this. The, 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 the evidence seems like. Yeah. Well, yeah. Palpable, like I remember, making, I remember making a comment on uh, that Madeleine McCann documentary. Making a okay, yeah, yeah. Before I'd finished it, to be honest. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Silly. You yeah do they, they do, they do, kind of sometimes save them stuff to the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, th I think I was a few just because it was quite a long series. I remember I'd left a few out, and I shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't speak about knowledge. I remember speaking my opinion based on what I'd seen, but I hadn't seen the full thing. What do you reckon about that making of a murderer guy? Making a murderer guy. We had that discussion. What, what's your? What have you? Uh, are you sat on whether you? What are you leaning more towards that he is? I didn't finish or not it. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. Speak without knowledge. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. You reckon? I don't know. It's best. I'm not going to speak without knowledge, man. Who knows? <laughs> That's what you said. Do you think Madame McCann's alive? Ma no. I don't know. That. Oh, you know what, bro? Um... No, that's another. That's a documentary I was talking about. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the, the do one, I, yeah, yeah, do you remember the really, conversation we had? We had yeah. it in the old in the old office. I remember we, I just freshly watched it and I was all excited and we were speaking about it. And I don't think you don't think you'd completely seen it all. So I was kind of like leading the conversation, but I hadn't finished it. And Glenn actually pulled me up on it. He said, "Have you finished it?" <laughs> I said, "No, not yet. Why?" And then I finished it. And I was like, "Okay, cool." Mm. Don't speak about knowledge. 
Yeah, I remember when they were showing like what, how what happened yeah, in yeah, the yeah, families. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was how long ago was that? Oh, that was in the older older, older studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe like just the last studio. Last studio. Yeah, yeah, last studio. Yeah, yeah, last studio. Yeah. The one that smelled of um, paint. No, no sauce. No, not nothing. Oh, herbs. Fresh, like fresh herbs. Yeah, like, not like mint. Was it like chives and um, garlic? No, I maybe. don't know. It smelled like a kitchen, like a fresh kitchen. Yeah, that's it. That's what I this, remember. Now, how did this studio? Didn't have this is amazing. This is the best one. Yeah, definitely. This is all ours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's great. I like to come in here sometimes and just like get crack on my work stuff. It's like a bit of a man cave. It's amazing. Yeah, you're around the corner as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd make the most of it, mate. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like it. Am I welcome to come here as well? Of course, bro. If I wanted to come and just do some work, I'd come and sit here. Of course, you never were in this part of town, though. I I could get a taxi over. Yeah, I guess. If you want to, is more than welcome. Okay, thank you. It's good to know. Just like I've got another, another base. Yeah, you do. You could be it. like you were like you could be in a meeting and be like, oh, uh, some people like, oh, I'm from uh, like West. And you be like, oh, I've got an office. Yeah, there. office there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see it. there tomorrow. It's, not, it's true. Eight a.m. Yeah, it's true. I've got an office. I've got a studio there. Yeah. I'll be just get in touch with some of my staff there. Yeah. His big phase's number. Give him a ding. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a ding. <laughs> so, how is um, Italy coming along, bro? Uh, Nepal. Yeah, we're due to. Uh, sorry. Napoli. Napoli. We're due to uh, Nepal. I think it's in Nepal. Oh. Uh, we're due to open on the second of February, bro. So we're, okay. it's, yeah, we're on. Yeah, everything's and on track. Next week, isn't it? Yeah, next week. Wow. So you're gonna fly there again? Oh no, you're not. You're just not going for the watch. Yeah. I, I think. I, yeah. We'll see. Inshallah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I must take you out. You back and forth, back and forth, different countries. But I that's it's, all good. It's, it's, it's not. It's all good. It's yeah. It's not. That's nah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Went to Barcelona the other day. Really. Mm. For a store thing, mm. oh amazing! You say store thing, do you mean for a, a men's bar? Or yeah, yeah, for a, yeah, yeah. What else would I? So mean? a store, yeah, 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 yeah. A store thing, uh, yeah. Looking. I'll try to be vague because I'll try to be vague because I don't know if you wanted to like mention on my. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a store thing over there. Okay, because <laughs> you know why I was trying think, to be vague what? because remember when you had like just like the idea to do King's Cross yeah. and on Fresh Ground you announced it. Alhamdulillah, that came through. Yeah. <laughs> thank God, thank God, thank God. Alhamdulillah. You told the whole world. I know. Oh, yeah, I, I, know. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. That's King's Cross is good. Yeah. Um, what was I just saying? You saying you went to Barcelona to do a store thing? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah inshallah, we're going to do a store thing there inshallah. for February as well. Inshallah. For but February? Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Wow. Inshallah. It's, getting, it's getting built at the time. Oh, know. that's fast. You got my man on it. Nah. You got in touch. You got in touch. You got in touch with me. You got in touch really? with me. I didn't. Yeah. I got a voice note. Never listened to it. Okay. I was telling someone this morning. I said, "Do you know what? Really, I'm 30 years old now." If you let me down once, what's the point? I might as well just find someone new. What's the point in going back to someone who's just going to let you down? I suppose that's what makes you a doer and getting things done. All right, quick, can't do it. Let me find someone else. Yeah, that's it. Like, You're a doer, aren't you? I try to be, bro. Yeah. I try to be because I'm very aware about people who just talk and people who do things. And I'm really aware that sometimes I have been known to talk and realizing that talking, you think that you're like talking a plan. But yeah, without actions, it's nothing. So yeah, try to be a doer, man. My mum's a doer. My mum's a big doer. Uh, and she stuck it on me recently when I was making excuses for not doing something. Come where it was. She's like, no, nah, I'm going to get it done because I'm a doer. I thought, yeah, you're right. It's too many excuses, too much talk these days. So, yeah, try and be a doer, man. So I get things get done. Yeah, I think there's also like an advantage of being a perfectionist. But then the problem yeah. with being a perfectionist is that if you're too much of a perfectionist, you're not, you don't get anything done. No, not really, no. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can't. I'd, I'd like to know if you can have, like, have a synergy of being a uh, perfectionist and a doer. But you'd have to be, you have to take a little off both of them, Ooh. you know? You can't be a perfectionist and have elite per perfection, is perfect perfection, and still do things like very fast. Because in in essence, yeah, yeah. if you're a perfectionist, you like wait till everything's absolutely perfect. True, you can true. miss the boat with that kind of stuff. Yeah, bro. yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. And then next thing you know, someone else has done it yeah. and they've been successful with it, and you're like, wow, that wasn't even that good. Yeah. My my one was better, but they did it yeah. and you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Because you wanted to be yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gems. I'm a big uh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, By the way, I'm, I'm a big man. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a big uh, pusher of that. You know, get things done. Would you say you're a doer? Oh well, definitely, bro. Like, look how like um, with even if you just look at Fresh Grounded, how even if we had how many times have we had no producer, no equipment, no done. nothing? But I know you're a doer. Yeah, there's been a camera, so we pressed record. But we have some people in the f team who are perfectionists and stuff, and they're learning to be doers. There you go. Yeah. So someone said something to me the other day. It was so funny. Uh, Kareem, who is working with us, yeah. and he said, um, I said to him, I said, bro, do you know what? We're freshly grounded. 
I just want to do more content. Like, I just want to do more. I feel like content is what's this, yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. And I said, it's a struggle because obviously, um, it, it's not easy to find guests like every day. But I said, if there's guests every day, I'll do an episode every day. And I said, for me, it's so important for me to put content out of Rational Grounded. It's the main thing that we do that I want to just provide as much as possible. And Kareem goes, yeah, bro. And he, was, he meant good by it. He goes, yeah, bro. And um, it's, it's true, you're right. And like sometimes, I, I, said, bro, I said, bro, sometimes it's quantity over quality. Quantity. So like, it should be, there should be a level of quality it should be, but don't yeah. try and become perfect. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, bro. And if there's anybody who could do quantity over quality, it's you. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. I just mean like you are a doer. Like yeah. you get things done. Yeah, yeah. But it's so funny because the way he dropped it was as if like, if anyone could do something rubbish, but still do it, <laughs> is you. So, no, that's true though, man. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Did I tell you about the Bob, I, uh, Bob Iger book? Say that again. Did I tell you about the book by the guy who is the CEO of Disney, Bob Iger? No. He's got a book called The Ride of a Lifetime. Okay. Which you would really benefit from, man, um, because it's about leadership and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he's the guy who is the CEO of Disney, and he talks all about his leadership skills and how he deals with it and how he got to the position that he's in. And it's available in audiobook as well, so okay. you can listen to it on your journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Omar listened to it, became obsessed, really? recommended it to me, became obsessed yeah. and I've been trying to recommend it to everyone especially people who are in leadership roles because he talks about how he hires people how he fires people yeah. and how he has those difficult conversations yeah. which you're quite good at actually because I've noticed you're quite direct with conversation yeah. and he that's one of the things that he says when you're firing someone you have to be very direct yeah. because you don't you got to respect them by yeah, being yeah, direct yeah. with yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. but he said there's still a method like he said you still have to be positive with it and say look mm. like he says one of the things he says is he, he so that he, they know what they're in for he says look the reason I've called you in today is, for, is to have a difficult conversation so they know instantly yeah. you know I mean so he's very direct yeah, Bob. and yeah, then he yeah. tells him why and everything and why things so. but he doesn't leave it vague like look I just don't think it's right yeah. because he said that's not really like a respectful way of doing yeah. it yeah no I agree um, but, that's oh, good a very interesting book it's, so it's, called, again, it's called The Ride of a Lifetime Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger, Robert Iger drop that down so that's yeah good. drop it down but that's just one of the elements how to fire people how you hired people how he became so successful how he managed to do things that he in worlds that he didn't really know like with Disney, they had to start um, the mo they had to start movies and all sorts. So um, just like how he got himself into those different fields that he wasn't really comfortable with. Talked about his relationship with Steve Jobs. Thank you. I've noted it down. He was one of the first people that Steve Jobs told that he has cancer and he's dying. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because uh, Steve Jobs owned Pixar, mm -hmm. and Bob Iger wanted to buy Pixar, and so and Steve Jobs was known like that. It's the most impossible thing is that you can buy Steve Jobs' company off him. It's not going to happen. And so Bob Iger managed to convince the whole board of Disney that at least let me try and buy the company. And reluctantly, they kind of agreed. And to their all of their surprise, um, Steve Jobs was open to the idea. And then on the day that their deal was going to be announced, Steve Jobs pulled Bob Iger to the side. He goes, let's go for a walk. On their walk, he told him that he's dying of cancer. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow. I did it, Bob. I can hear him his voice. I can hear his voice. He's still here. He's still here. He's working. He's got to launch his I know. business in a couple hours. He it's should go now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone should tell him to go. Yeah. He's very relaxed. I think he's too relaxed. I don't no, know. No, he's not. He's nervous. He said he hasn't eaten breakfast. That's not like Omar. He's probably he's still really here like smiling he's and looks very happy and relaxed. I think his comfort zone is helping people. And really, so, yeah. like, if he's stressed, like, he has to turn to that maybe. Did you see him helping me with the camera earlier? Yeah. Calmly. Don't, it was don't, nice, worry, man. don't worry, bro. We got this. We're That's sick. Oh, well, I was jealous. Was just... I, was, I wish I had Omar come over to me and say, "I oh, don't worry." I f oh, that was sick, amazing, nice little moment. Because you were all stressed. You know? like, I can't do it. And he's got, he's got a massive. He, I was trying to set up a camera, and he's got massive. He's got to launch his uh, business to the he press. Priority, he dropped everything he was doing from his office, came over to you, and calmed you down and helped you. I rate that. Yeah, he's amazing. a good guy, man. He's a doer. He's a perfectionist. Is he both? Does do things. He does do a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, of course he does, he, do he, does, a lot he does a lot, bro. Like, yeah, he does a lot, but, but the things he does he, are pretty good. No? But he, he likes to be a perfectionist. So he's a, so he's a, he is both. I guess. I wish he was more of a doer. I tell him that. I, I always tell okay, him that. Okay, fine. Right. But I, maybe okay, he wouldn't fine. be where he's at if he didn't try and perfect the things that he does. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Mm. I'm sure there's more type personality types, but I've in in it's my true, in my like limited it's true, in it's my true. limited no, in my limited like life of business, I've noticed those two clear ones mm -hmm. in almost everyone. Mm -hmm. You're either a perfectionist or a doer. Mm -hmm. I found that. Yeah. Or you're lazy. 
lazy is quite a frequent one you see in people, isn't it? Yeah, lazy. They yeah. don't, they're not a doer and they're not perfectionists. Like if it can be done, it's do true. it. true. If you can't do it, don't do it. You don't get any of that because they're always going to be short term gains, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of laziness, man. It ain't in business. Yeah, yeah. There is. Yeah, that's what uh, Omar and I were just discussing this idea of like short term gains and like a lot of companies they build products and they try and upsell as much as they can on the, on the products and stuff like that because they want to make as much money short term. So they're only yeah, thinking short term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to make as much money as possible. We'll stretch it out. But if you um, thought oh, I could upsell this product, but imagine if I give it away for free and I don't make money on it, but long term customers come to that product more because because of the beauty of the product what mm -hmm. it offers and how much uh, it and, and what can be offered to the consumer for such a little price uh, and then eventually long-term goal is that because you got so many users now over the last 10 years and you haven't been making money in the last 10 years your company sells for a billion rather than the people who are making short-term money because they can sell for an extra 50 quid they can sell, the, sell this mm -hmm. additional feature mm -hmm. They get less customers, but they're getting maybe a bit more profit at the end of every month. Mm -hmm. But long term, 10 years time, they're still just making 50 quid extra or whatever. But the other guy sold his company for a billion because he's thought about the long term goal. Interesting, isn't Very it? Very interesting. A lot of companies do that. Yeah, definitely. What can we upsell? Yeah, of course. Upsell, 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 it's upsell. Kind of in you naturally, though. Yeah, of course. That. But what if we give this for free? The wisdom is the, is, is the long game, isn't it? <clears throat> of course, man. And and uh, sorry, we were talking about just to finish that point. Like, if you look at people like Uber and Facebook and all these kind of people, um, uh, or, or, or WhatsApp's a great example. WhatsApp sold for one billion, didn't they, yeah. to Facebook? But um, their goal was just to build a database of users. Imagine if they charged upsell. They could upsell using GIFs. They could upsell using uh, sending videos. They could upsell so much. Yeah. Premium feature, yeah, yeah, yeah. takeaway ads. I don't ever remember there being ads on WhatsApp. Do you? Yeah. But how many apps, bro, had ads mm. and they were like 15 minutes of fame? Mm. They made a million, mm. Mm. they're gone. Mm. Or made a hundred grand, mm. they're gone. Mm. Because they sold they, they sold a premium feature for 59p. So how do you find the balance within that? Because there must be a balance within that, isn't it? But you've got to be clever, bro. These guys were obviously extremely intelligent. They knew what they were going for. We're not going to sell, sell ourselves short. They made no money, but then they sold for a billion after. And that's where all their money was. Yeah. But they, they had to struggle, bro. I, I remember the story of WhatsApp. There's a couple guys, bro, struggling. Mm. Same with Instagram. Instagram sold for how much? Was it, how I much was Instagram? It's a few billion, I think. But um, but even with that, I don't think there was. I don't ever remember there being a feature of Instagram where you purchase a premium version yeah. and you don't see ads. There wasn't, was there? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's interesting, isn't it, bro? Yeah, good but reminder, these are the companies man. that are successful. Very good reminder. Thank you. We just want to up, so up, so up, so. Yeah, mate. There is a culture that everything is kind of like this kind of short fix, get everything just done quickly. I think that's natural in our fit, isn't it? We just want to fix things quickly. Of course. But I think every day, like, there's all these young entrepreneurs and businessmen that all the ideas, it's, it's all about how to get rich quick. Oh, yeah. And, it's, it's, and Rush, big up Rush, because he did a wicked post about this, about all the background work that happens uh, and how many brands just pop up out of nowhere, which is just basically just a logo and it's just, it's, it's heartless. There's no kind of, like, feeling behind it. He was saying someone, I think, ripped him off a long time ago and the person mm -hmm. who did it was just someone who just it wasn't, didn't have what he had, didn't have the vision. It was just someone who wanted to make money off them and whatever. But it's so true. I think there's just there's a culture of uh, everyone wants things quick and overnight. We're in a fast paced society. Everything's fast paced. Instagram, everything. We look at it. We want everything kind of quick without thinking the long game and thinking about actually everything kind of worthwhile takes such a long time. Just to go on to what you're saying with your point. <coughs> Rush's story is interesting. You're right because he is in a field where he's very passionate about what he does. But there's a lot of people who recently have tried to make money off mm. the same concept because it became uh, it became popular. Yeah. He had like a spike in popularity yeah, when yeah. people started skipping. Yeah. And I think it frustrated him, rightfully so, because he's putting his heart, blood and soul into making sure that he provides the best content and the best products for people to a proper brand, though, He's yeah. got a proper brand where other people have just, have just got a, a logo, ultimately. Bro, they're, just going, they're just getting anything made in China yeah, sticking their logo exactly, on it. Exactly. And he takes his time and care. Yeah. And you can see in his products, bro, his products of are course, phenomenal. Of course. And he's not satisfied with it, bro. His products are so good. And when I went there, he was like, bro, we're changing this, we're getting this. He's always thinking one step ahead. Yeah. Even, he, you know, his, um, uh, what are they called them? Um, f what are those uh, jackets called? F uh, those jackets called that, like raincoats. Ponchos. Uh, and then you put, no, they're not ponchos. Um, Capes. <sighs> no, they're like a jacket, a jacket that you put a pullover jacket has a pocket at the front. I would have called it a poncho. And a zip. I thought that's a poncho with a hat with the hood on that. Yeah. I thought it's a poncho. Like a, a poncho is like a big raincoat that covers you head yeah. to toe, I think. I don't know what you're talking about. And, um anyway, he created like a really high quality version of that. And I was, I said to him, I said, bro, that couldn't have been cheap for you to make. Mm. 
But he doesn't. He, he, for him, it's not about that. It's about making sure he pr- makes the best product. Yes, it means he has to mark up his prices a bit more than everyone else. But at the end of the day, what people people forget how much they spent on something, and they but but if they have it for three years, they'll always mm. be like, "Wow, that was good quality." Yeah. Well, this is good quality. Is still, yeah, about definitely. As they don't remember, oh, I spent ten pound more on this than what the other person mm-hmm. charged. Yeah, True. Rush is inspiring when it comes to business stuff, and his journey's inspiring because even now, like he's not—he probably has the ability to get like a fat office in the um, in the city center and like different. But he's clever, bro. Like he's, he's using the tools that he has around him. He turned um, his gym that he would do uh, workshops in into his production studio, into his product, like his uh, warehouse, because he realized that it's m- more beneficial. To have a pro- pro- to have a warehouse in there, then to have his gym where he's doing one-off clients, and he could just do those one-off clients in actual gyms and pay a little fee. Yeah. Um, but but some people would be like, you know what? I've already got a gym that I'm like teaching people in. I don't want to use that space, so I'm going to now buy a warehouse, and then you yeah. become broke, bro. Yeah, because yeah. you're. But he used the tools that he had, smart. and he built it. Yeah, he's smart, man. His he office is in it next to it as well. Is it? Is that his office? Yeah, as well? yeah. His office is. Uh, yeah, his yeah. office is in the like, within the warehouse yeah. that he has. Sick. It's all in. Yeah. He's still in Oldies nice. and South, I think. He's there tonight. Oh, I told you. Yeah, you said yeah. There's a lot of good people there tonight, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to really it. Nice. I think uh, Blau's gonna be there. Yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah, um, yeah, quite a few people. It'll be fun, man. Are you bringing anyone along? No, I wasn't. Just wasn't myself. I wasn't aware I was allowed to. Am I allowed to? I don't think so now. No. Yeah, I think it had. It would, you would, they no, were I'm just on my ones, man. Yeah. It was like an invite only thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mahi was trying to tag me in Omar's post yesterday about getting tickets. Oh really? And I was like, why have you tagged me in that? Because I'll see where you want to go tomorrow night and get some tickets. I was like, I'm going, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that comment then. I was like, yeah, love yeah. it. <laughs> well, so, do you want to get in touch with you and just say, do you want to come down? Hmm? Do you want to get in touch? Yeah, he got in touch and asked for my address because he was okay. going to send me it and then he just called me or voice noted me and just, yeah. Yeah, I think the original plan was he was going to send everyone like blue envelopes, yeah. like private VIP okay, invites. Right, right, right. And then I think there's a lot of hassle in like just getting everyone's addresses for and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it makes sense just so now I think they're collecting their invites when they get, when they get there. It's really nice like the way he's done it. Like there's, you know how there's a red carpet for VIP people. He's he's got blue carpet. Yes. Yeah, because sick. everything in Fito is blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there's blue cups and everyone's drinks are blue. So blue drinks. Six, 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 um, six. Don't ruin it for me. Oh yeah. I want yeah. it to be a surprise. Because by the time that um, p- this episode is out, the launch would have happened. Okay. So. Uh, he's got a keynote presentation. Oh, don't ruin it for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well yeah. tell me what he says. <laughs> It'd kill me, bro. You said you did most of it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's at uh, 0.5%. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, um, um, we, had to, we spoke about quite um, a, a fair bit in this episode. I think so. Yeah, with regards to death and prison, didn't we? Yeah, we did speak about death and prison. We should mention that we don't, we don't, we don't condone of the people that we necessarily spoke about, other than maybe some of their works. Yeah, I was, I was talking about um, Ross. Rossi, yeah. Ross is well, just, I don't know what Ross, Ross, Louis. I, I don't know what Ross so and Louis are on. People I, know. I'm they, talk, could be, they could be on. A, I rate, I don't know. I'm talking about his professional yeah, they, career as yeah. a as a journalist. Agreed. Come on, man. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm not. Talk, I'm not throwing you under the bus. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, above, yeah. you don't know people who listen next week. They take out one thing in context. But not to be fair. Freshly grounded listeners are the nicest people. Fine, in the world. Don't follow anything for anyone he, who we mentioned today said. That's it. As a journalist, he's great. Yeah. I'm not going to. Why are you so defensive about him? He's not. No, I'm not. I'm just. just so there's nothing in the the papers about like no, Ross no. Kemp accused of this again, or he's quite. I think he's quite a legit family. Yeah, man. I'm not saying anything. I, but I, I'm, I'm, every time I'm, you're saying like, yeah, but don't. I'm always trying. I'm, but do you know what? I'm always trying to balance being PC. True. Okay. Ross Kemp on gangs is good. That's yeah. what I'm going to say. And his Belmarsh documentary is really good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And the pirates one. Yeah. But don't follow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, this is Freshly Guarded, uh, episode 145 or something, uh, We get and uh, we're getting close to, um, we're getting close to uh, a nice uh, launch that we're going to announce mm, soon, mm, mm, we'll mention mm, it in the intro, mm. yeah? When's the actual launch of the that, that um, thing? It depends, thing. Uh, I think a I think couple weeks, couple or, weeks or maybe next week or something. Okay, yeah. just don't need to the, the last minute again. Sorry? Don't leave it last minute again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening.